Look, I'd like to thank the committee for coming in here. I'm very cognizant, Mr Tierney, that you were appointed on the 29th of January 2013, so my first question will really apply to representatives from Borough Gosh. Um, I understand, uh, obviously, that Borough Gosh won the tender for taking over of Water Ireland over Borough Mona. In that process, Borough Gosh put forward that they had 55 experts put in their employ who could provide the expertise in relation to setting up of Irish water. However, as reported in the document in front of us, it was further stated that those staff were not actually made available to Water Ireland when Water Ireland was set up and so required the actual uh, call for consultants and the need for consultants. Could I ask the question quite clearly? And it is in the document, and I refer to the pages, Mr. Tierney, if you want to. It's on page five and page six. Uh, is it true, therefore, and can you answer clearly, was this fact made aware to the department before they made a decision on giving out of this contract or the, of the, the takeover of Water Ireland by Board Gosh? Uh, when you consider that um, the government and New Era contracted and, and handed out this particular project to Borough Gosh, I believe that it appears that they were actually sold to PUP because they were given to understand that there was staff available in the whole process that were then told that they were needed for to continue to run Borough Gosh at the level it was needed. It's a little, it reminds me a little bit of the story of the, the man in the, in, 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 the, in the nightclub late at night trying to attract a lady and telling her he'd bring her home in, her par in his Porsche for her to discover that there's no Porsche. In fact, she has to pay the taxi to bring the two of them home. <laughs> and that's the way it looks to me, Cahirlo, because Borgos got this on the basis of expertise in-house, and now suddenly we're paying 86 million of the 150 million start-up, or 57% of the budget, uh, because this expertise is not now available to Water Ireland. That's my first question. My second question is, I'm aware quite clearly of the challenges that are, 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 are facing Water Ireland. We have a thousand water schemes across the country still at risk of bacterial and viral contamination. We have Ross Common that's on bile notices on a continuous basis. We have 41% of water being lost through leakages. We have flood warnings down across the Shannon, and on the other hand, we have water shortages in Dublin and in Leinster. People are prepared to pay for, for services, but they're not prepared to pay for poor water and for, for no water. So my question is, in relation to the money that was spent, and it's approximately a, a, a one million, which is quite low, to companies that would be uh, I would be known to me, such as Nicholas Dewar, uh, J.R. Barry, etc., who are engineering and effect companies. How much work has gone in to, as referred to by, by Deputy Coonan, in relation to dealing with the issue of the shortage of water in Dublin and in Leinster, and indeed the problem along the Shannon, where people we saw on television over the Christmas were afraid that their front gardens were being washed away by flooding. How much work has gone in in this preparatory phase to setting up the reservoir at Gary Hinch in County Leash to actually deal with the problem of the flooding in the Shannon and the lack of water in Dublin and in Leinster in general. And finally, the last question is, in relation to the 11 billion worth of assets that uh, we're told, as per the document, that Water Ireland now possesses and owns, it states in the document that there is no satisfactory record of the actual assets. There is a limited record of their condition. And yet we have established that there's actually 11 billion of a figure of assets available to Water Ireland to start working on. Can you clarify how this figure was arrived at? And does this figure actually stand up? Because it is very important that we know what we're starting off with, because the figure is used by comparison in relation to the 86 million in consultancy fees that it may pale into insignificance in comparison to 11 billion of assets. But clearly there is no identification of how the 11 million is arrived at. And I'm asking, can you give us clarity on that? Thank you.